us stand. The Church of God in Christ has come to the city of Dallas, Texas, to celebrate the night work and ministry for the prelate of the Texas Metropolitan Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction of the Church of God in Christ. presiding bishop is being assisted by the following members of the presidium of the Church of God in Christ. The Right Reverend Jerry Wayne Macklin, first assistant presiding bishop. The Right Reverend Lawrence Marcellus Wooten, Sr., Second Assistant Presiding Bishop. The Right Reverend Brandon Burdett Porter, Secretary for the General Board, the Right Reverend Michael Eugene Hill, Sr., Assistant Secretary, General Board, the Right Reverend Daryl Lynn Hines, Sr., Milwaukee, Wisconsin, the Right Reverend Prince Earl William Bryant, Sr., Houston, Texas, the Right Reverend Malcolm Winslow Kobe, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, the Right Reverend Elijah, the Right Reverend Charles Henry McClellan, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, the Right Reverend Elijah Hosea Hankerson III, St. Louis, Missouri, the Right Reverend Jerry LeVon Maynard Sr., Nashville, Tennessee. The chairman of our General Assembly, the Right Reverend Lemuel F. Fuston, the General Secretary of the Church of God in Christ, the Right Reverend J. Harley Lyles, the Vice Chairman of the General Assembly, the Right Reverend Melvin Smith. Justice Charles Connor, Chairman of our National Board of Trustees, the Right Reverend Dwight E. Wall, Sr., the staff of our presiding bishop, the Chief Operating Officer, Bishop Keith Kershaw, Executive Assistant, the Right Reverend Sellers. College of the Board of Bishops is being represented today by the second vice chairman in the person of Bishop Watson.
He has done great things. prayerfully receive the members of the Williams family. Our prayers are with them that God would continue to strengthen them and undergird them. It is recorded in the universal psalm. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Your rod, your staff, they comfort me. David recorded that the Lord prepares a table for him in the presence of his enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy, they shall follow me all the days of my life. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. your strength.
you take your seats, with the exception of the College of Bishops for the Church of God in Christ, momentarily the presiding bishop and the general board will prepare to remove two symbols of the office of the bishop from the remains of Bishop Reginald Lamont Williams, Sr. The two symbols of the office of the bishop are the pictorial cross and ring, the cross of gold that hung around the bishop's neck was a symbol of his imprisonment for Christ. Bishop Reginald Williams was inducted into the College of Bishops in the year of 2013. The cross was a constant reminder that he was a servant first to the Lord, the Lord's church, and the Lord's people. The ring worn by Bishop Williams symbolized his priestly authority given to him by the church to perform ecclesiastical duties by the Lord Jesus Christ himself. The presiding bishop will give these two symbols to the bishop's twin sister, Regina Williams Mobley. National Adjudancy now prepares to cover the body of the bishop with a purple cloth. Purple represents the office of the bishop. The cloth symbolizes the shroud placed upon the body of our Lord at his death, according to the 19th chapter of John's Gospel. celebrate this leader by covering his face with a napkin. 
John 20 and 7 teaches us that a napkin or a face cloth was placed upon the head of Jesus. We now prepare to place in the beer with the bishop the Annales Ministeri Episcopatus et Martis. This document is a tribute that is part of the memorial ritual given to only members of the Episcopacy of the Church of God in Christ. The Annales reads as follows. The Chronicle of Ministry, Episcopacy, and Death. Here rests the Right Reverend Reginald Lamont Williams, Sr., the priest, the prophet, the prince of preachers, born Wednesday, May 30th, 1951, husband of the late Mother Pia Haynes Williams, and father of four sons, called to preach the gospel, 1971, pastor of Love Sanctuary, Church of God in Christ. Fort Worth, Texas. Consecrated to the Episcopacy as an auxiliary bishop, Texas Northeast First Ecclesiastical Jewish Diction, Sunday, November 10th, 2013. Received Episcopal assignment as prelate, Texas Metropolitan Ecclesiastical Jewish Diction, Church of God in Christ, on Sunday, November the 8th, 2015. Promoted to glory on Sunday, the 24th day of February in the year of our Lord, 2024. The analysis will be received by our scribe, Elder Nicholas South. The adjutancy will now seal turn and drape the vessel. In our tradition, the Church of God in Christ turns the beer with the bishop's head turned to the altar and his feet turned toward the congregation. The position of the beer having been turned allows the bishop to face the congregation for one last time as if to proclaim his final message, be ye also ready for the Lord's return is at hand. The pall that covers the beer represents the true servant leadership of this man of God. Bishop Reginald, Williams believed that the people did not exist to serve him, but rather he existed to serve the people. Bishop Williams was indeed a servant. The life of Bishop Reginald Lamont Williams Sr. will always be celebrated as a courageous soldier in the army of our Lord. He fought a good fight. He finished his course. 
he kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for him a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give him in that day. Church of God in Christ, let us put our hands together and celebrate. Let us celebrate. person who served him in life will now complete his service in his passing. We will have the seating of the Episcopal adjutant in the person of Elder Samuel Witherspoon. Saint to the Lord at the direction of the presiding bishop, J. Drew Shear, the flag bearing the seal of the Church of God in Christ, which hangs in front of Mason Temple at World Headquarters, has been lowered to half mass to celebrate the life and the ministry of Bishop Reginald Lamont Williams, Sr. It's celebration time. Our hearts may be heavy, but I believe that God is going to lift us as we celebrate this servant of God. Let's put our hands together again and celebrate the Lord. And let's receive the presiding facilitators for this service in the persons of the first assistant, Bishop Macklin, and the assistant secretary, Bishop Hill. Thank you, Bishop Wells. We're here to celebrate the life and the legacy of Bishop Reginald Williams. As we pray for the family and as we pray for the church family and the jurisdictional family, I would also like to make a request of you today. All of these services are difficult, but this one today is extremely difficult on our presiding bishop because of the close brotherly relationship that they share. So as you pray for the family, as you pray for the church and the jurisdiction, I ask you today, let's lift our leader up in prayer that God will strengthen him, that God will comfort him and as he opens his mouth to minister to this waiting congregation, God will let a rich, heavy anointing rest upon our presiding bishop today. Will you do that for me? The hymn of comfort, C.H. Mason Memorial Choir and Congregation, Invocation, the Right Reverend Prince E. W. Bryan, Sr., the Old Testament, the Right Reverend Charles H. McClellan. The core response, again, the C.H. Mason Memorial Choir. The New Testament, the Right Reverend Darrell L. Hines, Sr. And the affirmation of faith, the Right Reverend Brandon B. Porter. And then we will have a selection by the C.H. Mason Memorial Choir in that order. God bless you.
If you don't mind, stand to your feet. The hymn is found in page seven. When we all get to heaven. All right? Oh. Oh, sing the wondrous. Sing the wondrous love of God. Jesus, sing his mercy. When we all, when we all get to hand, run what a day that will be when we all. Oh, yeah. The second verse while we walk the pilgrim pathway. Then the true and faithful, trusting, serving every day. Oh, just one glimpse of him in glory. Will the toils of life repay? Come on, when we all sing it, chosen. Come on, for the day of rejoicing. Oh, that will be when we all see Jesus. Let's go to that fourth verse. Onward to the prize. Come on. Onward to the prize before us. Soon his beauty will be whole. Soon the pearl. Now come on, Church of God in Christ said, when we all come on, get to him. What a day of rejoicing. Oh, that will be when we when we all. Oh, we will. Let's get our programs and let's wave them. Come on. Church of God in Christ. Declare when we all come on, get to him. What a day of rejoicing, oh, that will be when we, we will see. Now, if you don't mind, put your programs down and clap your hands and let's say it. Come on, oh, when we all, yes, sir, get to hell. Oh, what a day of rejoicing that will, that will be when we, when we all see Jesus, oh yeah, we, one more time, come on, oh, when we all get to heaven, what a day that will be, that will be, when we see Jesus, we will sing and now, if you know you're going to shout the victory, say yes. Come on, church of God in Christ, yes. Come on, sing it, yes. Oh, yes. Hallelujah, yes. about today in our hearts, our reverence, our Father and our God, 
and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep and the soon coming king. Thou who art over us and thou who art with us, thou who art one of us. Today we acknowledge your sovereign reign in the earth. God, you rule and you super rule. You reign supreme in all the earth. You are the author of life and the giver of eternal life and the creator of all things. We celebrate your attributes today. You're omnipotent. All power is in your hand. You're omniscient. You know all things. You are not present. The Emmanuel, the God with us. You're with us right now. You're holy and just. You're God of love and wisdom. You're faithful. You're merciful. You're sovereign. You alone are worthy of our praise. You alone is worthy to receive glory and honor. The only wise God, our Savior, a very present help in the time of trouble. You are rock, you are deliverer. You are strength, a strong tower, a horn of salvation. Oh God, you are a comforter today and be that. You are a comforter. The God of all comfort. Comfort us now. Comfort uh, this family. Comfort this local church. Comfort this jurisdiction. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your amazing grace. Thank you for your unconditional love. Thank you for never leaving us and always been with us. Forgive us today of our sins. Forgive us of our wrong, the wrong that we have done and the wrong that we are. You said we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And the wage of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. Thank you, Jesus. You said if we confess our sins, that you are just and faithful to forgive us of all of our sins and to cleanse us from our unrighteousness. And so the day we come with thanksgiving. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, tell him thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, for the blessings of life. Thank you for your steadfast love. Thank you for salvation. Oh, we come to tell you thank you. Thank you, Jesus, for our presiding bishop. Hold him on today and bless him on the day. Thank you for this William family. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for a faithful witness. Thank you for a faithful witness. Yes. Yes, Lord. My soul say yes. Yes. Thank you for Jesus, his death on the cross. Thank you for his burial. And most of all, thank you for the resurrection. Thank you for joy in the morning. And all these blessings we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. spoken through the mouth of 
prophet Isaiah, has thou not known, has thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortality must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortality have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? For the sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us a living victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the works of the Lord. For as much as ye know, your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Affirmation of faith. The Bible says in 1 Peter 3.15, we should always be ready to answer the question of our faith. And here it is. We affirm our faith, it's on page 9, we affirm our faith in the Bible. Congregation. We believe the Bible. We believe the Bible. We believe the Bible. We affirm our faith in God. We affirm our faith in the blessed hope. We believe in the blessed hope, which is that of the church of God, which is in Christ and his return. We affirm our faith in repentance and salvation. We believe that the only means of being cleansed from sin is through repentance, that is, in the precious blood of Jesus Christ. We believe that the regeneration by the Holy Ghost is absolutely essential for us in salvation. We affirm our faith in Jesus Christ. We believe that the redemptive work of Christ on the cross provides healing for the human body and answering the redeeming prayer. We affirm our faith in the Holy Ghost. We believe that the baptism of the Holy Ghost, according to Acts 2 and 4, is given to the believers who ask for it. We affirm our faith in sanctification. We, we believe, believe in the sanctifying power of the Holy Spirit. By whose indwelling the Christian is enabled to live a holy, separated life in this present world. Amen. Everybody, come on, clap it like you're sanctified. 
Bishop Williams and you knew him personally. Oh my goodness. Look at all the lives that he has touched. Come on, give the Lord a praise for him and for the impact he has had on our life. I will only be a moment. We're going to go right through this program. Two notes, first of all, honor and respect to our presiding bishop today. Bishop J. Drew Sheard, are we praying for him today? This is not only a bishop that served in this great church that he leads, but it is his friend. And uh, it's a little different when it's your friend on top of all of that. We pray for him today and to all of the board members who have been acknowledged, but thank you all for 
sharing and undergirding in this service today. Two notes. First of all, I've often wondered what heaven was going to be like. All right. and, uh, no, I'm not trying to start no trouble. I um, just wondered. I mean, I, I figured that there were there were no, 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 I ain't trying to do that. I'm just trying to tell you I thought that there would probably be some trumpets in heaven. And I thought that there would perhaps be a violin and perhaps the cymbal. But I forgot I never thought about tambourines. Hallelujah. Bishop, Bishop Reggie Williams was a churchman. Yes, he was. And in whatever situation he found himself, he knew how to represent this church. Whether he was preaching at glad tidings or preaching good tidings to your church, he always seemed to have the right word for the right time. Yes. What few of you probably know, and I'll say this and I will introduce those who are coming, had a special connection to the church that he pastored, Love Sanctuary there in Fort Worth. Yes. Amen. Because that's the church that my mother was a member of. When my mother came from Henderson, Texas, right. moved right. to Fort Worth to go to cosmetology school, she joined that church under Dr. Battles. And after she was married to my father, on a regular basis, we would come through Fort Worth for my dad to preach, and he would preach there. I was always glad to be there because Dr. Battles played trumpet. Yes, yes, yes. And although I'm semi retired, I did too. All right. And don't fool with me. All right. I may show up in Memphis this year Come with my trumpet. Every now and then you need somebody to play something. I mean, say something. <laughs> Allow me to introduce those who will give tributes and those of us who know well our direction if we give a tribute then we we have words we'll give the resolution to the family or if we have or vice versa we seldom do both. The International Department of Women, Mother Barbara McCoo Lewis, will be represented by our general supervisor today by jurisdictional supervisor, Mother Mary Bonds of Region 3. The National Adjutancy by the Right Reverend Dickerson Wells, the College of Bishops by the Right Reverend Albert Galbraith Jr. will be represented today by the Right Reverend William H. Watson III, the second vice chairman. The Judiciary Board, the Right Reverend E. Charles Connor, our Chief Justice, is here. General Assembly, the Right Reverend Lemuel E. Thuston, chairman. General Church, by the Right Reverend Joe Harley Lyles, Jr. Then the Ministry of Music. And then I will return for the furtherance of our celebration. And all of God's people, just look over at somebody and tell them, I want to go to heaven too. The International Department of Women, Church of God in Christ Incorporated, Mother Barbara McCoo Lewis, General Supervisor, 
Mother Willamay Rivers, General Supervisor Emerita, Bishop J. Drew Sheard, Presiding Bishop and Chief Apostle. Resolution. Then the king said to his men, do you not realize that a commander and a great man has fallen in Israel this day? 2 Samuel 3 and 38. Whereas we pay tribute to the life and legacy of Bishop Reginald L. Williams, Sr., prelate of Texas Metropolitan Jurisdiction. Whereas our Heavenly Father has called from labor to reward one of the revered fathers of our church. We are confident in that, in that it is rather to be present from, absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. And whereas Bishop Williams was a devoted husband, father of four, and a grandfather of three, Bishop Williams served faithfully as a pastor of Love Sanctuary Church of God in Christ and was known as the Prince of Preachers. And whereas Bishop Williams was distinguished as a leader of the church as he served on the district level as superintendent of the Oak Cliff District, on the jurisdictional level, as the chairman of finance, a member of the executive board and trustee board of Texas Northeast First Jurisdiction, and on the international level as a national chief adjutant and assistant adjutant general with a 45-year history of ministry. In 2015, he was elected, selected to lead an established a new jurisdiction and served as the prelate of the Texas Metropolitan Jurisdiction. That's right. And whereas Bishop Williams had a love for the church and an untiring spirit of service, his dedication was without reservation. He was a friend to the multifaceted ministries of the International Department of Women and its Women's International Convention. His wisdom, understanding, and kindness to those with whom he came in contact with left an indelible impression and shall always be a living memorial to him. And whereas it is fitting that we, the International Department of Women, pause and honor Bishop Williams stalwart servant of, of the Lord. Be it resolved that in his home going, we have sustained a great loss, but his memory and his example will always serve as a measure to the strength of us. May we hold fast the legacy of faith, trust, and good works inherited from this servant of the Lord as we express gratitude to God for having shared with us the life of B Bishop Reginald L. Williams, Sr. <clears throat> Be it further resolved that we extend to the Barrett Biological Church and Ecclesiastical Families our sincere love, concern, and prayers, knowing that earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal. For God has promised, I will never leave you comfortless. I will come to you, John 14 and 18. Be it finally resolved that a copy of this resolution be given to the family and a copy placed in the archives of the International Department of Women, Church of God in Christ prayerfully submitted this seventh day of March in the year of our Lord, 2024. Mother Dr. Barbara McCoo Lewis, General Supervisor. Mother Dr. Wilma J. Huey, First Assistant General Supervisor. Mother Vanessa Winbush Gatlin, Second Assistant General Supervisor. Mother Mary Jane Walton, Third Assistant General Supervisor.
the house has been addressed. I'm going to ask that our adjutant mother, Mother Diane Bogan, would stand, our deputy adjutant generals, Dr. Herman Platt, Pastor Glenn McKinney, and Pastor John Smith would stand. Our scribe is with us today. And I'm going to ask that the members of the National Adjutancy would also stand with us. Our paths cross in the servant ministry of our church, the National Adjutancy. And there are perhaps members of the Episcopacy that served in the Adjutancy along with Bishop Reginald Williams, if you will also stand with us. I want to say to the family, the Williams family, the Love Sanctuary Church, and the Texas Metropolitan Jurisdiction, that as you adjust to your new normal, I want to encourage you with the 23rd number of Psalms, because more comfort and more consolation has been found in these six verses than any other verses throughout the Bible. Catch this. In the first three verses, God is seen as a good shepherd uh -huh. who makes provision so we will have no need of want. He is seen leading us by still waters and we are grazing in green pastures. However, by the end of the 23rd Psalms, there is a change in the roles of both our God and the believer. No longer is God depicted as a shepherd leading a flock of sheep, and no longer are we seen as sheep who are being led by our shepherd. But God is now seen as a gracious host, ushering us into a special place, serving us from a special table, and we are seen as his special guest. And in the final three verses, we have moved from green pastures and from still waters into the king's palace, and we're sitting at the king's table and being served by the king himself. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemy. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Our scribe will present to the family our formal resolution. The blessings of the Lord be upon you, and we bless you in the name of the Lord. You may be seated. Bishop's resolution, grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We, the members of the Board of Bishops of the Church of God in Christ, Incorporated, in a gesture of solidarity, stand along with the elected officers and the executive board to resolve the following to the family of Bishop Reginald L. Williams, Sr. Whereas 
as God in his great power has removed from our midst. A Christian brother who was faithful and a help to his fellow men. Those who were encouraged and cheered by his words of wisdom will forever be impacted by his influence. Loyalty and friendship, service, shall be his legacy. Whereas at the demise of the Bishop Reginald L. Williams, the prelate of Texas Metropolitan Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction, and the pastor of the Love Center Church of God in Christ, Fort Worth, Texas, who preached the word for over 45 years and served as a loyal member and leader in the Church of God in Christ as Assistant Adjutant General, National Chief Adjutant, and many other areas which has caused him to be a beacon of hope and an undeniable impact in the community. The body of Christ and the world at large has suffered a great loss. Bishop Williams' service expressed the gravitas of him being a prelate or a prince in the Lord's Church, having the distinct honor of serving his church as a defender of the Church of God in Christ's faith and the foundation of holiness. As the preacher with the anointed and iconic voice rendered the prayer, Lord, if you don't do it, if you don't do anything else for us, save us. Save us from ourselves. He touched the lives of many. Be it resolved that we express the sympathy that we feel personally and collectively to this family biologically, biological and ecclesiastical, his children, his grandchildren, and to all impacted, we admonish you to rely on the comfort of our gracious God in heaven and earth. Be it resolved that our church and this world has been a better place because this churchman, Bishop Reginald L. Williams blessed us with his presence and his godly example of service. Numerous areas of service and leadership he has rendered to our great church serving with honor and distinction. Be it further resolved that a copy of this resolution is given to the family and a copy be kept in the official archives of the Board of Bishops of the Church of God in Christ Incorporated. World Headquarters, Memphis, Tennessee. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit, Romans 15 and 13. Giving under the hand and seal of the Board of Bishops this seventh day of March 2024. The Honorable Bishop Albert Galbraith, Chairman, Bishop Adrian D. Williams, Secretary, the rest of the officers, Bishop Roger L. Jones, First Vice Chairman, Bishop William Watson, Second Vice Chairman, Bishop Tyrone W. McCombs, Assistant Secretary, Bishop Christopher Milton, Treasurer, Bishop Nathiel Wells, Financial Secretary, and Bishop E. Bobby Warren, Sergeant at God bless you. <coughs> Great honor and deference to our most noble leader, His Eminence, Presiding Bishop J. Drew Sheard. And we love you, we're praying for you, and thank God for your leadership to this great family whom I love and know very personally. Um, I hope I am not going to be embarrassed by this statement. But Bishop Williams would call me and said, Nolan, I just want to know if you saved. <laughs> well, I guess I was the only one getting that call. <laughs> okay. But we love him. And on behalf of Chairman Michael Eady, uh, who is actually on his way here now, I'm going to ask if all the pastors and elders that are here are part of the Church of God in Christ, would you stand as Secretary Prince E.W. Bryant II reads our resolution. 
Thank you. General Council of Pastors and Elders, Church of God in Christ, National Headquarters, 938 Mason Street, Memphis, Tennessee. Servant of God, well done. Life on earth, well won. Entering the joy begun. The battle is over, the victory won. Whereas it has pleased our Heavenly Father to translate from the labor of this life to the rest and fellowship of the church in heaven, the Right Reverend Reginald Lamont Williams, Sr. And whereas the officers and members of the General Council of Pastors and Elders, Church of God in Christ, desire to express our love, respect, and heartfelt sympathy to the Son, Reginald Lamont II, Xavier Thurston, James Newell Haynes, Chandler Ellington. To the siblings, twin sister Regina Mobley, supervisor Olivia Williams, Herbert Williams, and Hubert Williams. Whereas the Right Reverend Reginald Lamont Williams Sr is distinguished by his loyalty to the Church of God in Christ as the founding jurisdictional prelate of the Metropolitan Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction of Texas for almost 10 years, former Assistant Adjutant General, International Youth Department Executive Board Chairman under the leadership of then Superintendent Bishop J. Drew Shear and as the beloved and celebrated pastor of the Love Sanctuary Church of God in Christ in Fort Worth, Texas for 22 years, demonstrating his faithfulness to the local church, rearing his family to a life of service, and modeling before all that the steps of a good man are ordered of the Lord. Yes, Be it therefore resolved to extend to the family our prayers and that you will look to God of all mercies and the father of all comfort, knowing assuredly that the Williams family, the state of Texas, and the Church of God in Christ at large will long feel the absence of the right reverend, Reginald Lamont Williams, Sr. And then be it finally resolved that a copy of this resolution be placed in the official annals of the General Council of Pastors and Elders and a copy presented to the family of the Right Reverend Reginald Lamont Williams, Sr. Respectfully submitted, officers and members of the General Council of Pastors and Elders of the Church of God in Christ, Administrative Assistant Superintendent Michael Eady, Chairman, Administrative Assistant Kaimba Nolan, Vice Chairman, Superintendent Prince E.W. Bryant II, Executive Secretary, Administrative Assistant William N. Ward, Jr., treasure, and may you feel the strength of the Levitical tribe of the Church of God in Christ. We give honor, respect, and deference to our leader, the Honorable Godly J. Drew Sheeran and to the members of the general board, other elected officers, appointed officers, and to the women's department of the Church of God in Christ, I bring you salutations. We rise to offer a resolution of respect for Bishop Reginald L. Williams. Return unto thy rest, O my soul, for the Lord hath dealt bountifully with thee. Psalms 1, 16 and 7. Whereas Bishop Reginald L. Williams heard the voice of his Savior, answered his call, and was truly faithful in his calling, and can now enjoy an eternal rest. Whereas Bishop Williams served his local church, community, jurisdiction, exceptionally well. He championed causes for the less fortunate 
challenged everyone who knew him to respond in excellence and compassion. Whereas Bishop Williams served faithfully as a bishop of the Church of God in Christ. Whereas Bishop William was an influencer in his personal and professional life. He was loved and admired and will be deeply missed by his family, his church family, his jurisdictional family, and so many others. His contribution in this life are many and will be remembered with great admiration. Whereas in the providence of God, he has brought to a close the life of Bishop Reginald L. Williams, but a greater and a better life rests beyond the river. Whereas we, the officers and justices of the Judiciary Board embrace with love and unceasing prayer this family, the Williams family, in our prayers and our thoughts, we ask that you would pray for them in their time of need. Therefore, be it resolved that the Judicial Board gives honor as biblically charged to whom honor is due to Bishop Reginald L. Williams. Be it further resolved that a copy of this resolution will be given to the family and a copy kept in the archives of the National Judiciary Board Memphis, Tennessee. To the family, we know your loss is deep and your sorrow is great, but we want you to know that we share in your sorrow, but more importantly, we recognize that this loss is heaven's gain. I only submitted on this seventh day of March, 2024. Bishop E. Charles Connor, Chief Justice, Attorney Andrew Smith, Vice Chair, Assistant Supervisor Cassandra Lewis, Vice Chair, Dr. Carl E. King, Secretary, Justice Diana Banks, Justice Lindy Ramsey, Justice Edwin Bass, and Justice Pastor David Stokes. God bless you and strengthen you. We are standing by your side in prayer. God bless you. Well, you know if you are, and you know if you are not, but if you know that you are a believer in the finished work of Jesus Christ, open your mouth, lift your hand, and just shout, I am a believer. I am a believer. He that believeth on the Father and the Son shall have everlasting life. Clap your hands and say, I'm glad I'm a believer. Honor to the presiding bishop of the church, the general board, the vice chairman of the general assembly, and all of the leaders, this family. It's good to be in Texas. It's good to be in Dallas. Uh, Texas has a colored and distinguished history. Um, I'm glad I can claim it as my partial heritage. It is a big place. In fact, there's no state in the union, no state in the world as big as the state of Texas. I know what I'm talking about. But the bigness of Texas was redefined when Reginald Williams left Michigan and became Texas property. He enhanced. And this state, this city, the jurisdictions, the brotherhood in this area and across the waters is bigger and better because of Bishop Reginald Williams. We ought to praise God for what he did. to 
try to keep our focus on this day, but he not only touched the lives of thousands, but he was the friend to many. And what a blessing to count him as a friend. For if a man would have friends, he must show himself friendly. But there is a friend sticketh closer than a brother. And um, his father, Bishop Herbert Williams, and my father were friends since the 40s. And that friendship was passed on to the next generation. And when uh, the late Bishop L.H. Ford, the presiding bishop at that time, and Bishop Chandler Owens, his assistant, said we need to give the women more time and more space on Women's Day. So while Women's Day is in session at the Convention Center, let's have Men's Day at Mason Temple. And he asked um, the late um, Elder Isaac Patrick, and Brother L.F. Thuston, and Elder Reginald Williams to put together the first Men's Day. And he would not have selected Reggie Williams if he did not know, he was sure enough a man. That's right. Come on. He was not only a man, he was a leader. It was not only his father-in-law, but that was his bishop. Yes, sir. And I watched him on numerous times enhance the finesse, the flair, the dignity of Bishop J. Newell Haynes. Yes. And his ministry <laughs> made what was good even better. Do I have a witness? Well, Longfellow said that we can remember to make our lives sublime if in our departing we leave footprints in the sands of time. Looks like Bishop Williams is leaving us far too early. Feels like we should have many more years. Seems like this circle should not have this break. Not at this time. But the savior of the church knows when we can best leave our footprints in the sands of time. And footprints of plenty has he left. Let me close with this observation from the annals of the General Assembly. Of course, you know he was an elder that qualified him. He became a pastor. In fact, he pastored before he came to Texas. That qualified him. He became a national officer the assistant chief of the national agency that qualified him he became an auxiliary bishop yes, sir. that qualified him yes, sir. and ultimately a founding jurisdictional bishop yes, sir. all of those levels qualified him for more participation in the general assembly but according to our records his last speaking role and participation was in April of 2023. A delegate raised an issue on the floor of the General Assembly about improper certification of churches in Texas jurisdictions. And at that point, every jurisdictional bishop in the state of Texas was summoned to give an account. Most of them are in this room right now. And every one of them gave an answer until we got to Bishop Williams. I said, Bishop Williams, we're here to get your response about the accurate certification and denominational status of the churches in your jurisdiction. And Bishop Williams just shook his head. 
In fact, he leaned on the podium and shook his head. I said, we're waiting for your answer. He said, I have an answer. I am not in violation. Every church in our jurisdiction is a church of God in Christ, just like all the rest. I said, give me that first line again. He said, I am not in violation. And if you pull the records of that session and get the verbatim report, it will say Bishop Williams was not in violation. All right. That may just be a red, that may just be a reference for you, but I just believe when he stands at the judgment ball, that same testimony that he gave in the general assembly will be because of the blood of my savior I am not and shall never again be in violation and the church said amen preacher he's been called a friend but Bishop Williams was also a protector if you were his friend he was going to protect you I had an opportunity last night to share and I shared some of the same things that his son said that he would pick up the phone say hey bro how you doing how's my sister goodbye he just wanted to check on you. Yes. He loved this church. Yes. And that's why he served in so many capacities. And Williams family, I want you to know that just about every branch, every department of our church has sent a resolution celebrating this man of God. And each one says the same thing. He loved the church and he loved. Supervisor Williams, Bill and uh, Gloria Gaither wrote a song expressing their faith. It's called Because He Lives. The last stanza of that song says, and then one day, I'll cross that river. I'll fight life's final war with pain. But then as death gives way to victory, I'll see the light of glory because I know he lives. There is no doubt in my mind today that when he crossed that river, he saw the light of glory because although his body may not be here, 
he will always live within the hearts of the church of God in Christ. God bless you. We love you. Thank you for lending him to us. And there is a resolution that's signed by our presiding bishop. God bless you. Trump! 
symbol. Let the name of Jesus, Jesus, a horrifying. Let the name Jesus. I can call him in the midnight. I can call him early in the morning. Whatever I need him, whatever I want him, I can call him Jesus. My redeemer, my healer, the most high God, my everything. Jesus, 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 oh, I touch her. Second Assistant Presiding Bishop, that you receive him with the words of Amen. amen. Texas. <laughs> Let's just say Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. Power in that name. Praise the Lord, Chiki. Ah, there's something about that name that made demons true. We thank God for blessing us to have our child. Have such a one. Ah, yeah. Ah, yeah. Well, let's just say Jesus. Oh. Oh. We're at a celebration for the Bishop Reginald Williams. But he says, let the work I've done speak for me. But not only does the work he's done speak for him, but we have, he was a general in the army of the Lord. But we have the commanding chief of the church of God in Christ. One that God has called, one that God has anointed. Yes. Know the man. Yes. He will come and break the bread of life and let us know 
how great this man was and thank God for you. We want to receive our eminence, the presiding bishop you, of the Church of God in Christ, the Bishop J. Drew Sheard, Athens Symbolic Selection. Hallelujah. Let's say Jesus one more time. Jesus! Jesus.
Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And the people of the Lord said, Amen. Amen. Please be seated in the presence of the Lord. Thank you so much. I'm glad that I'm saved and sanctified and filled with God's precious Holy Ghost and that with the mighty burning fire. This has been one of the most challenging times of my life. My friend and brother for better than 45 years. Uh, every low point in my life and every low point in his life from that time on, we were there for each other. Um, I think we became very close in about 1978. We were at a UNAC convention, I believe, for a convention in, I believe it was either <coughs> Cleveland or Chicago. And uh, we became very close. I won't tell you what drove us so close together. But we were so close, and I thought that uh, we began to talk on a regular basis, and I figured, uh, Excuse me for saying it like this. Reg is my boy. All right. That's all right. And so we had developed that strong relationship. And so we came here to uh, believe it was UNAC, or might have been AIM, in 1983, before I got married. I was already, I was already engaged and whatnot. And he was looking at uh, Bishop J. Newell Haynes' daughter, and uh, she just wrapped him all around her finger. <laughs> so I said to, uh, we were staying at the Hyatt, and they had a basketball court on the roof. And I figured that since he's my boy, we play against John Delhi and Ed Anderson. Well, I figured Reggie would take care of John Delhi because they are both short. <laughs> John still short. And I take care of Ed Anderson because I had played against him numerous times. And we got out on the court, and I'm ready, and I'm uh, playing ball now. I noticed Reggie couldn't do nothing. <laughs> I threw him the ball. He couldn't dribble. <laughs> couldn't shoot. Delhi just take the ball from him. I say, what's wrong? What? What? I don't know, man. I don't play basketball. <laughs> We discovered that day that we would never ask him to play ball. And we discovered and said it wholeheartedly, you a preacher, but you ain't no ball player. Our life went on for many, many years. We didn't always agree, but we always agreed to love each other. And uh, I don't know what how this is going to come out when we go through a week and it's already been challenging because we talk every day. And I don't know how it's going to, it's just week I've been wondering, was he going to call me? And it just didn't happen. So he's my friend and brother. Never had anything to happen. Just talked to him on Saturday. I just got in from California. Coming from the airport, he called me. Hey, bro, what's going on? He sounded better. I talked to him Friday. He sounded weak. Saturday, he sounded better. I said, hey, man, sound like you're getting better. I said, come on, Reg. Come on, man. I'm coming, bro. I'm coming. We talked a while. Then sister, Mother Olivia called me that night and said, Reggie's gone. I want to know gone where. And uh, it was very difficult. Of course, I walked around in the days all that Sunday. And uh, 
I'm going to miss him. Yes, sir. And, uh, and uh, I love him very much. To this Williams family, thank you for allowing me to be a part of the family. Amen. The beloved Sanctuary family, bless you. We're praying for you. The Texas Metropolitan Jurisdiction. My two other brothers that's left, Kershaw and Ways, man, we got to stick together. To our first assistant, Bishop Macklin, thank you, Bishop Wooten, our second assistant, Bishop Porter, Bishop Hill, Bishop Hines, Bishop Bryant, Bishop Colby, Bishop McClellan, Bishop Hankerson, and Bishop Maynard, Bishop Thuston, Bishop Connor, Bishop Lyles, Bishop Watson, all of the bishops, especially the Texas bishops. God bless our uh, saintly mother, Mother Lewis. Thank you, Mother Barnes, for representing her very well. And to the supervisor of the Texas Metropolitan Jurisdiction, Mother Lewis. Amen. To all of the supervisors. To my darling wife, Evangelist Karen Clark Shear. Amen. To all of the bishops' wives, the pastors' wives. God bless administrative assistant Edie, who made his rival. We're glad for you. To all of the pastors and elders, to the host pastor here, Pastor Clerkley, thank you, sir, for opening your doors. Yeah. The saints, yes. Yeah. <laughs> saints and friends. I'm going to say one of my old sayings, if you pray for me, I won't be long. And if you don't pray, I won't be that long. <laughs> I want to go to the book of 1 Thessalonians, the fourth chapter the 13th through the 18th verses. If you'd be so kind to stand in reverence to the word of the Lord. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Hallelujah. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall yes, rise first. Then we which are alive in and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. I want to place emphasis on this 17th verse, then we which are alive in and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. I want to talk to you for just the next few fleeting moments from the subject, we'll be together again. We'll be together again. You may sit in the presence of the Lord. The very essence of these words spoken by the apostle was to comfort the saints at Thessalonica who mourned for the death of loved ones and friends who died in the Lord. My brothers and sisters, Paul's purpose was to dissuade them from excessive grieving. And don't take me wrong, because grief for the death of a loved one is normal. However, I've learned that sometimes that grief is more for ourselves than the ones we've lost. Yes, Yet the apostle admonishes us to not grieve as others. The reason for this admonishment was, first of all, according to the 13th verse, it made it appear that they had no hope. Paul labeled it as acting too much like the world who had no expectations of a better life. Secondly, the Apostle Paul implies that this type of behavior is a result 
of a lack of understanding. My brothers and sisters, there are some things which we cannot afford to miss concerning those who fall asleep. For the land which they've moved is a land of darkness which we know little about and have no correspondence with. Yet there are some things concerning those who die in the Lord that we need not and ought not to be ignorant of. And if these things are understood and duly considered, then they will be sufficient to reduce, not eliminate, but reduce our sorrows concerning the dead. Church, they sleep in Jesus. The 15th verse of the first Corinthian and the 18th verse said they have fallen asleep in Christ. We need to understand that death does not annihilate them, but it is sleep to them, for they have retired from this troublesome world. I'm sure all of us can attest to the troubles of this life. We deal with unscrupulous people. We, we deal with confusing issues and trying circumstances on a regular basis. Even Job chimed in and said, man that is born of a woman is of a few days and full of trouble. So then when a saint dies, he or she relinquishes their labors to rest in Jesus. The souls are in his presence and their dust is under his care. So they are not lost, nor are they losers, but they actually gain much more than we can imagine. The 14th verse tells us that on that special day, they shall be awakened out of their sleep to return with Jesus. My friends, the doctrine of the resurrection and the second coming of Christ is a great antidote against the fear of death and an inordinate sorrow for the death of a saint. We have full assurance of this doctrine because we believe in the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Can I get a witness here? How do we know that Jesus died and rose again? My brothers and sisters, please allow me to share with you a conversation between death and the grave concerning Jesus. Yes, I eavesdropped. I, I, I was being nosy, and, and, and I heard in my sanctified imagination that prior to the death of Jesus that the grave and death formed a coalition. Death said to the grave, I'll sting him, but you got to make sure you hold him. The grave answered back and said, I got this. I'll hold him. You just do your part and sting him. But early that Sunday morning, death noticed that his sting was missing. And the grave was losing his grip on Jesus. And I heard the grave yelling to death, I thought you were going to sting him. And death replied, I thought you was going to hold him. And Jesus, observing their controversy, said, oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, grave, where is your victory? And Jesus lifted up his voice and said, all power is in my hand. It is taken for granted that we as saints know and believe this. Look at your neighbor and say, don't you believe it? The death and uh, resurrection of Christ are fundamental articles of uh, the Christian foundation and they give us hope of a joyful resurrection for according to the 15th chapter of 1 Corinthians and the 18th and 20th verses we read Christ having risen from the dead has become the first fruits of those that sleep and therefore those who have fallen asleep in him have not perished nor are lost. The resurrection of Jesus is a full confirmation that life and immortality are brought to light. Well, I need to tell you that the state and condition of a saint shall be glorious and happy 
at the second coming of Jesus. This is what the apostle informs the saints of in that 15th verse. And that 16th verse gives us to know that the Lord will come down from heaven in all the pomp and power of the upper world. For the Bible says the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. He ascended into heaven after his resurrection and passed through these material heavens into the third heaven with which must retain him till the restitution of all things and then he will come again and appear in his own glory. Church I've come to admonish you as I go to my seat don't lose hope because Jesus is coming back again. Even though death and grave attempted to abort his mission, I'm, still, I'm standing here to tell you today that Jesus is still coming back. I'm closing here, but uh, that 17th verse says, Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. Uh, or oh, look at somebody and tell them we're going to be together again. If the Lord comes before we meet death, uh, we who are alive shall be caught up uh, together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Church, uh, I've come to tell you that my brother may have beat us in death, but he won't beat me getting into heaven because he can't get in until I get there. We'll be together again. But here is the admonitory counsel of the beloved John found in the third chapter of 1 John in the second and third verses. It said, Beloved, now are we the sons of God. And it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But help me say, we know. We know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifies himself even as he is pure saints. Although death has separated me from my friend and brother, we'll be together again. Church, the comprehension of this is mind-blowing. For Paul even said it was mysterious. For he said in the 15th chapter of 1 Corinthians, Behold, I'll show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump of the trumpet, death shall sound, and the death shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. It is then that we'll go sweeping through that city. It is then that we're going to put on our robes and tell the story how we made it over. And the 17th verse says that the joy of the saints that we shall forever be with the Lord. Well, be not weary in well doing. For you shall reap if you faint not. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain, tell your neighbor, hold on and don't let go. Because they that wait, upon the Lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up on wings like eagles they shall run and not be weary they shall walk and not faint look at somebody and say after a while it'll all be over so keep on pushing we'll see him again keep on praying We'll see him again for some glad morning when this life is over. I'll 
cry as you hurt. Don't get weary. Don't lose hope. Storm clouds on every hand. Our hearts may be broken, but tell your neighbor, hold on. I'm not giving in now. Don't worry. If my brother could speak to you now, I can hear him saying, when you hear my home going, don't worry about me. I'm just another soldier on my way home. Look at somebody and say, don't give up. We'll see him again. Some glad morning. We'll see him again. Keep on praying. We'll see him again. Don't throw in the towel. We'll see him again. Just as soon as my feet strike fire, I'll lay down my sword and shield. And I won't have to worry no more. Do you believe it? Then say yes, Lord. I don't know about you, but I'm going to a place where the wicked shall cease from troubling and the weary shall be at rest. Grab your neighbor by the hand and say, neighbor, get ready. I'm going up yonder. I'm going up yonder. No more crying there. No more dialysis there. No more pain there. They tell me there's a tree planted by the river that the leaves are good for the healing of the nation. Tell somebody it'll be all right. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Everyone except the family is standing. Soon and very soon, we're going to see the king. We will do our committal of my dear brother Jesus. here. Of course, the final resting place, the Adjutant General, Bishop Dickerson Wells, will be in charge there. Now, of course, I kind of believe that's a time for the family and we're going to observe it. Just so happens I'm a part of the family. Yes, you For as much as it is pleased, oh, thank you, Lord. Almighty God, to take out of this world our deceased Bishop Reginald Lamont Williams, Sr., we commit his body to Mother Earth, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, looking for the general resurrection in the last day and the life in the world to come through our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose second coming in glorious majesty to judge the world, the earth and the sea shall give up their dead and the corruptible bodies of those who sleep in him shall be changed and made like him to his own glorious body according to the working whereby he is able to subdue all things unto himself. Please recite with me the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and 
forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. Now may the God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal Jesus, equip you to do his will, working in you that which is pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. And may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with you all. Amen. Our Adjutant General, Bishop Dickerson Wells, will come at this time. Bishop Prince Brian is uh, going to serve as the jurisdictional prelate for the Texas Metropolitan Jurisdiction and the pastor, along with myself, of the Love Sanctuary, Church of God in Christ. So any direction will be given by Bishop Brian for the jurisdiction and the church. I am yet in, as Bishop William's wishes were. Thank you. As prepared to the tabernacle, the beer, I'm going to ask that you would kindly remain where you are until the presiding bishop and the board of bishops exit the auditorium. The final resting place will be Lincoln Cemetery, 8100 Fireside Drive, here in the city of Dallas, Texas. <coughs> I'm going to ask that the Board of Bishops, once you exit the auditorium, if you will stand on both sides of the aisle at the doors so that the remains of our fellow colleague can pass through for one last time. Up there, but the pure and heart. 
see the light. Come give me that still way. Everlasting life. Everlasting life. 